Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is device master record. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen. Please go back and check out the introduction. You can look in the video description below for links to any supporting information and an outline of the material. In each executive series video, we have a standard agenda. You can see those four topics in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, Device Master Record, or DMR, comes directly from 820.181. In 1345, this topic is called Medical Device File, MDF, and it comes directly from section 4.2.3. DMR, MDF, in five words. Everything needed to build devices. There are a few minor differences between the DMR and the MDF. The MDF actually contains everything that is in DMR and it includes three extra items. Those items are a general description of the device, the device's intended use, and the shipping, handling, and distribution procedures. Your DMR basically is the recipe for your medical device. It's everything you need, all the documents, all the procedures, all the work instructions, all the records to build, ship, install, and service your medical device. You have to have a DMR for every uh, device type or device family. And the elements in the DMR have to be approved according to your document control process. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, you have a fully approved DMR released to manufacturing before your product is actually released to the marketplace. Second, you do change management. All of the changes to the DMR are reviewed and approved according to your change control procedures. And then finally, you can easily produce the DMR when it's requested by quality auditors or external auditors. So how do I know this is not working? First, we have trouble producing the DMR for anyone that requests it. Second, quality audits or external audits highlight or find gaps in the DMR. And then finally, Throughout change management, through the medical device life cycle, changes are made and they're not reflected in the DMR. So the DMR is obsolete or it's out of date. Now for those three bonus questions. The first, how do we manage and control our DMRs? Second, when suppliers are involved, how do we communicate the DMR requirements to the supplier and ensure that the supplier actually accepts those requirements? And then finally, with contract manufacturers, when they want to make changes or when they propose changes, who reviews and approves those changes and how do we ensure the DMR is updated appropriately to reflect those changes? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.